10 times out of 10, you know what happens? Darkness flees, bro. Yeah, bro. Goes every time. Every time. <laughs> Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. Brother Malachi. We are the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. Let's talk about fighting, pushing back the darkness by being a fire in the night. Amen. Yeah, yeah so we're kind of going there today, right? Like everybody likes to talk about the mountaintop moments and the light and the joy um, but i think everybody when we really step back and acknowledge the reality of the situation of the world we're living in the church we're living in i mean we begin to recognize that there's a heaviness man like everywhere i go i see that i find it it's in people's eyes it's in their voices when they begin to speak about families speak about society speak about the church um, there is a lot of darkness man and and it's real. Yeah. It's real. And I find that, you know, one of the things that again and again I've asked myself, and I think many people are asking themselves, is like, what, what can I do? Like, this is such a systemic, massive problem on so many levels. Like, how can I respond? Am, am I just simply here, helpless, watching life and reality and history unfold in front of me? Or is there something that I can do about that? And, and I see the, the helplessness converting slowly but surely into hopelessness. And as I see that hopelessness in people and I recognize that response, I also at the same time see that that is a deep, deep lie, an untruth, in fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and the Lord wants to speak to us a word. And as we, we look back, we can see the fact, the fact that what, what John wrote in his gospel in chapter 1, verse 5, the light has entered the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the first, right? That's the first, that's the big lie and that's the way the devil's trying to get the win like before the game even starts. Yeah. Right? By, by leading us to hopelessness. It's Absolutely. like, okay, the problems are so big. Yeah. Like, Done. who am I? Throw in the towel. See you later. I'm just going to give in, right? And that's, and if we give in to the hopelessness, the despair, yeah. we're, we're done. But we're not a people of despair and of darkness. We're people of the gospel and of light and of God's mm -hmm. promise that the light has entered the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. So yeah. the question for you, Brother Malky, okay, beautiful words. How, where is that in my life? How do I bring light to darkness? How do I experience light Bro. in the darkness? Because, like, the darkness is real. Yeah, it's real, real, but there's something that's more real, and that's the beauty of it, man. See, here's the reality is, is that you and I are not helpless. We possess this profound gift that we've been given by God. It's your freedom. It's my freedom. It's our ability to say yes to the Father's will, to say yes to God's plan for me now, here at this moment. And every time I say that yes... I light a fire, bro. Every time I say yes to looking at the man who I walk past on the street begging, and I say, no, I'm gonna stop and ask him his name. I broke into the isolation that was a darkness around this man, and I bring the light of Christ. Every time I say yes to being patient and loving with one of my children as a parent, I'm going to be saying yes to breaking the darkness of the fear that somehow love is conditional. And I bring them the light of the truth that no, love, real love is unconditional. You know, it's like every time we look back in the history of the church, every time there were these moments of crisis, there was this call that God put in people's hearts to recognize that there's a power greater than this world. And, and what's at the heart of the crisis? What's at the heart of the crisis? Everybody will throw all kinds of things, but we can reduce it down to one thing because it's always one thing. It always goes back to the beginning, to this moment in the garden when Adam and Eve made a choice. They made a choice to disobey. And the church fathers write about this beautifully when they speak of Our Lady. And they said Mary at the moment when she received the annunciation of the angel Gabriel about this mystery of the incarnation and this woman said yes, through her obedience she undoes the disobedience of Eve. Through her, yes, she lights this fire that in fact is not just any fire, but the eternal fire of the Father's heart become flesh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And that fire enters in, that light enters in because Mary says yes to what God had in front of her at that moment and kept saying yes. And we are able, if we want to fight the disobedience and all the just havoc that it's wreaking in the world and in the church, then let's say yes to obeying the voice of the Father in our lives. Let's say yes in the concrete little moments, man. It's not like it has to be huge things. Little moments. But every little moment is a fire lit in that night, lit in that darkness, man. And when all these little lights start getting lit up, it's like the Easter vigil, bro. It's all dark in the church. Mm -hmm. The Paschal candle comes in and we start passing the fire. And the next thing you know, there's the warm glow of candlelight filling the church. And the light, Lumen Christi, has entered because we all touched our candle to the fire. So every time you say yes, you touch your candle to the fire. And you bring the light of Jesus into a place where there was darkness before. And you know what? Guess what? Ten times out of ten, when you light a candle, when you light a fire, darkness flees. Ten times out of ten. It's a risk-free deal, bro. It's like you light fire, darkness runs. And if we're in the midst of a darkness, it seems like it's too much and it's too oppressive and we can't do anything, we need to reject that lie. We need to reject that lie. And say, no, I have a gift that's been given. Yeah, and, and every time, like, I, um, and how is it, right? How is it we push back the darkness? We say yes. How we, is it, bro? We Concretely. say yes. We say yeah. yes. We say yes. We say yes. Like, little by little, yes by yes, the mm-hmm. light shines and the light spread and the fire, and the fire is lit and the fire spreads and the fire, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, we're told that the Lord is a consuming fire. Yeah. Right. And when we say yes, the fire comes. When we say yes, the fire ignites. When Mm. we say yes, the fire spreads. And it's in the little yeses. Like Mm -hmm. the little yeses matter. Mm -hmm. And and I was thinking of like of Saint Therese, right? Everybody Mm. loves Saint Therese. (laughs) But all Saint Therese really did is made these like little hidden yeses over and over again. Over and over again. She said Mm -hmm. yes and became a doctor of the church and became Mm. a great saint by saying yes. Like my brothers and sisters, like the little yeses, the little acts of obedience, Mm -hmm. they matter. And it's not just like a nice thing, like a little, like when we say yes, the fire of the Holy Spirit, like the fire, the consuming fire of God is made present and the fire, right? The fire, it's such a good image because the fire gives light yeah. and the fire gives warmth, yeah. right? And so when we say yes to the Lord, there's, br- there's, there's a raining of light and there's a raining mm. of warmth, right? Mm. And, the, and the coldness, the, like the coldness that we experience, it's mm-hmm. thawed, the darkness is pushed back and like, oh, we just need it. We need it, bro. And we you know, we also need, because see, it's, this is the thing is, is, you know, sometimes we're, we're blind to the place where Jesus is asking us to light that fire. And so maybe just a word for folks watching is, is that like, we need to actually say like, Lord, show me, like, where in my life, look around, where in my life can I light a fire? Where in my life can I bring the light of Jesus into darkness? Who is in my life? Who's a part of the reality that I see day to day, normal routine? Where is it that Jesus is asking me? Right there. Because if you're thinking, I don't know what to do, ask Jesus. Show me where the darkness is and I will bring the light there. Mm -hmm. Show me where it is that there's a lack of hope. You know, maybe it's unforgiveness and I need to bring the light of Jesus into my own unforgiveness and let him undo that and drive back the darkness of resentment and bitterment you know, a strange relationships, you know, like maybe it's just the normal fidelity, you know, in my heart to my relationship with my wife or my husband, you know, it's like maybe it's as a child choosing obedience to my mother and father, like, whoa, that's pretty radical. Mm -hmm. But like here we are, we find ourselves again and again in front of these opportunities, uh, but we can be blind to them. So I think we need to ask for that grace, Mm -hmm. like, Lord, show me where to bring that fire. Mm -hmm. Show me where in my life today Mm -hmm. the darkness is so that I can go Touch the candle to that flame, which is the eternal flame, which is the love of God the Father that's been made flesh, Jesus. We touch that flame to that fire, and guess what happens, bro? You put that flame there, you bring it into that darkness, and ten, time, ten times out of ten, what's going to happen? Peace. Peace, darkness. See you later. That's it. Later! My brothers and sisters, we can do that. I can say yes. Like, with God's help, I can mm. say yes. With Amen. God's help, I can say yes. And, and we thank you for watching. We thank you for praying about it. We thank you for being yes, because we need your light to illumine 
the world. We need your light to warm us. Um, so let's say yes. Because my brothers and sisters, little by little, poco a poco, yes by yes. Vamos a llegar. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it to that place of eternal light. My brothers and sisters, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Goodbye, y'all.